just wanted to let you know that you are amazing, special and capable of anything. Thank you for watching this video and taking a positive step for your learning. So year seven, probability and statistics in 15 minutes. Can we do it? Yes, we can. I'm gonna cut straight to the chase because you're not here for any fun or fluff. You just want to know what do you need to know for that statistics and probability test in year seven. The first thing is that statistics is about measuring and comparing and presenting data. And there's two different types of data you can collect. There is numerical and there is categorical. Numerical data is all to do with numbers, counting numbers, measuring numbers. Maybe you're doing centimeters, maybe you're doing distances, maybe you're doing times, all to do with numbers. Whilst categorical data is all about picking a category. Is your favorite color blue or yellow or green? What kind of pets do you have at home? All about categories. Let's focus on categorical data first, categorical data first. So these could be questions like, what will the weather be like tomorrow? Or what's your favorite color? Um, there are two main ways that we represent categorical data. Sorry, three main ways. The first is a dot plot. In a dot plot, you have your categories down at the bottom. So say, for example, you've got favorite colors, blue, yellow, pink, red. And you put frequencies, which is how many people picked it. And you represent that through dots. So four people picked blue here. Two people picked yellow. One person picked pink. Um, and six people picked red. Another way of showing your categorical data is through a column graph, which is exactly the same as a dot plot. Actually, I'll erase this axis out. Except instead of dots, you are going to put columns. So this represents four, this re represents two, one, six. But how are you meant to know that? Make sure you have labeled your axes here with the frequency. And column graphs, make sure your columns aren't touching. A very important thing to remember to get full marks in your graphs is you have to use let's go. L stands for labels. You need to label both axes. You need a frequency going up and your categories. Maybe don't write categories, but say like um, favorite color or weather. So be very specific, favorite color down the bottom. Don't write categories. I just wrote categories so you know that's where the categories go. ES stands for even scale. So when you've got your dots and you've got your columns, it needs to be evenly spread out. What I mean by that is you don't have a scale going 1, 7, 10, you know, that, that's not an even scale. You need to count up in 1s or 2s or 3s, etc. And the last one's a title. You need to label your graph. So maybe you can say year 7's favorite colors. You need a title at the top to get those full marky marks. Another way you might see your data displayed is through a pie chart where each category has a certain section of the pie chart. Remember when we're looking at pie charts, a circle adds up to 360 degrees. So once you've found your percentage, say 45% of people picked red, to find what percentage or how much of the pie chart you should color in, you need to go 45% times 360. And to make 45%, into a fraction, 45 over 100 times 360. And once you do that multiplication, you will see how many degrees of the circle needs to go to that category. Once you figure that, you realize it's 162 degrees. So you have to make sure that you measure 162 degrees and say, oh, that must be for cats. Pretend that was the category. So that's how you can split a pie chart. Remember, you need a title. So, you know, like, um, what animals do you have at home? And you need a key so people know, oh, the blue section of that pie chart equals cats. So that's categorical data. It's data to do with categories, and you can either display it with a dot plot, column graph, or pie chart. But remember, before you get into all of that, you need a frequency table. 
in your frequency table, you need your categories first. Make a little tally from there, and then you put the actual number that the tally represents. All right, let's have a look at numerical data. We can split numerical data into two different things. We can split it into discrete data, and we can just put it into continuous data. Discrete data is data you can count. Think of, you know, number of Smarties in a packet or number of cars you see on the freeway. You have to count those. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Whilst continuous is something you measure and you often get decimal amounts. So if you're talking about heights of people in your class, um, the distances you travel to get to school, you can get like 23.5 kilometers or something like that or 21.7 kilometers. But for example, could you get um, 23.2 cars? No. So that's how you can tell the difference between discrete or continuous data. There are two ways that we can display numerical data. The first is with a line graph. Line graphs normally include two continuous sets of numerical data. So for example, I have made a line graph of my morning walk and this is how it would look at 7 a.m. I was at 5 kilometers away from home. Then 8 a.m. I was 10 kilometers. Then 9 a.m. I was 15. So you can plot the points like that and draw a line to connect it. So if it said, you know, how many kilometers did you travel from 7 to 8? You can see the distance between these two is 5 kilometers. And how many kilometers I travel together? That would be 15 kilometers. See how I have labeled my graph with kilometers walked in time. I've got a title, so don't forget let's go comes in handy here as well. The second type of graph that we looked at with numerical data is called a stem and leaf plot. Remember um, a stem and leaf plot contains numbers in the stem. Here's the stem. The first half of the number is in the stem and the second half is in the leaves in order. So this is how those pieces of data here would look in a stem and leaf plot. You need a title. So maybe this was the ages of people outside the supermarket. Let me write that in. Voila, it is written in. And you need a key so people know that if they read one in the stem and a zero in the leaf, that equals 10. So when we are looking at numerical data, there are some special things that we look out for when analyzing it. That can include our mean, median, mode, and range. So the mean and median are ways of measuring the middle of your data, the center of your data. The mean is the sum of all the numbers divided by how many numbers there are. So in this case, your mean would be 1 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7 plus 8 plus, plus 9 plus 11. Um, divided by seven numbers because there are seven numbers there. Your median is the middle number when everything is in order. So you put your numbers in order and you go big number, little number, big number, little number, big number, little number, middle. So it's seven. Now, if you have a case where there's two numbers in the middle, you find the mean of them. So you add them up and divide by two. The mode is the one that appears the most. Okay, this one doesn't have a mode to start up, but imagine if I chucked another 11 here. Your mode is 11 because there's two 11s. And the range is the biggest minus the smallest number. So you've got 11 minus 1, your range is 10. And then we come to probability. The probability is a likelihood of an event occurring. We measure probability from 0 to 1. With one meaning 100% certain that's going to happen, and zero meaning nup, not going to happen at all. We complete in maths probability experiments. So maybe throwing a dice is considered an experiment, picking a marble out of a bag is an experiment. In these experiments, there are numerous outcomes. So if you were throwing a dice, that's the experiment. The outcomes can be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is also what we call our sample space. So writing down all of the possible outcomes for a probability experiment. And the event 
the main event is the thing that we want to see. So maybe we want to see a six being thrown. So if you wanted to calculate the probability, probability of something occurring, say we wanted the probability of six, we look at the outcome we want, how often that appears, we want and how often it appears over all the outcomes available. And the outcome we want is six, so that appears once. And there are six outcomes altogether. So the probability of getting a sixth a six is one sixth. I've also got a little video at the end to show you the difference between theoretical and experimental probability. And hopefully that'll take us to our 15 minutes. So I know that was very fast, but hopefully if you're on a rush, this will give you a good overview of what you learned in your statistics and probability unit in year seven. And if you need anything in a bit more detail, go have a look at my statistics and probability playlist and find out more about the areas you're not so sure about. What is the probability of a bones day? For those who don't know, a bones day is a day where Noodle the 13 year old pug stands up. This means that the day is amazing and that you can get up and achieve your dreams. The other option, of course, is a no bones day, where Noodle doesn't have the energy to stand. It's a day you should take easy. The theoretical probability of a bones day is a half. We will either have a bones day or a non bones day. However, we can conduct an experiment to see if this will happen in real life. And after eight days of tracking Noodle's progress, maths teacher I am, the experimental probability of a bones day is actually 3 eighths. Hopefully this will help you understand the difference between theoretical and experimental probability. And don't forget, every day is amazing, bones or not. Let me know if you have questions and follow for more.